The sun's gone down ages ago. It's amazing how well these cameras work in this light. The lad's tucking into a little bit of Tuna, seared tuna and wraps. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. No Do the job. <laughs> Captain Hans. No <laughs> Chef Hansen at the moment. Chef Hansen. We had our veggie drawer closed up, forgot about it a bit. We got a little bit of mold on the stuff, so we're trying to dry them out and save them. We don't have any swing hammocks which we need for uh, for the veggies, so yeah we've got to try and keep the drawer open otherwise it sweats. The change in temperature night and day. We've got a bit of laundry going here. Yeah, beautiful man. Absolutely beautiful. Smoking along. Oh, 7.6 with 10 knots of breeze. Yeah, so this is the difficulty of sailing when you've got eat the boys have got lots of jockeys in here. There's space in your freezers. So everything is jam-packed. And that's all the frozen stuff. And the fridges are full. There's some more fridge space down here. Now this was a late addition. Uh, so we could store a little bit more uh, frozen goods. It's always a problem on, on boats when you're sailing. The more freezing space, the better. Always a hassle keeping the greens together. We've done a little ceviche mix over there and we've got all the sobs and a bit of sashimi. Gonna have a little snack for lunch. A little snack for lunch time. Some ceviche. So last of our tuna, so now we can put a hook back out there again. Oh, That's the deal. Fishing. Until we finish the fish in the in the fridge, we're not allowed to fish again. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we're gonna do it always before this trip's over. That's for sure. Yeah, so we've gone from mainsail this morning. We back onto the gullwing system. This uh, wind swung more into the southeast, coming in behind us, and. Uh, yeah, so you get a lot of boom slap. We had quite a bit of swell this morning. It's settled down now. Um, you get a lot of boom slap when you get the swell coming, quartering from behind. The boat basically rocks and then the boom slaps a lot if you don't have a lot of pressure. We had light winds this morning. So yeah, we've got uh, building building sea uh, tomorrow and winds going up to 25 knots. So we've, uh, and most of that's from basically from from aft so we've gone to a gull winging system we're still on the code we we in all likelihood tonight we'll pull that down and and go on to the upwind code which is a smaller code zero um, just to reduce the amount of pressure that we're going to have uh, through the night um, if we have too much wind then we'll just dump it and go on to the uh, jib alone so we've got the jib on the left and the code zero which is our second biggest sail the next biggest is our, or well, the biggest uh, is our, sp our spinnaker or our kite, which is an asymmetric, which we may actually uh, use in the last three days getting to St. Helena because it's, uh, we get some really light winds and it's straight downwind. So it could be cool to sail that because it's a beautiful sail, big purple sail with the Edisto emblem on it. So hopefully we'll get to see that um, towards the end of the trip. Yeah, we've got the, we've got the jib basically tied out as far the port as possible. I'm going to take a seat up front here. Ah. Ah. Yeah, you can see the two together, bit of an overlap. Beautiful to sail. This is like the nicest sailing you could do uh, on the code and, and on the jib when, you, when you're sailing downwind like this. It's uh, 
it's got a beautiful motion the boat just gets dragged down it's it's it doesn't yaw at all it's it's really quiet you got a lovely sound on the hull when you when you're inside and, and sleeping and uh, yeah it's, it's the most comfortable you don't have any banging you don't have any problems with with boom slap and uh, you know the one thing about this area is these we're going into the trades now as we go further north and um, your winds don't uh, veer too much uh, generally it, it stays pretty much true and you can uh, you can set sails and you can we should um, with a bit of luck actually manage to go all the way to St. Helena um, without without uh, any uh, tacking or jibing because we're on a straight line of course to St. Helena is straight from here and the wind stays behind all the way so yeah, hopefully a nice easy sail all the way yeah I wanted to just to give you an idea of, of the dynamics on the boat um, it's it's always very difficult when you when you're not running the show and you or you're not the owner and it's your mission to actually film and and uh, you know, tell the story of what you're doing it makes it a little bit more difficult because not everybody wants to be on social media and paraded around the world so I've got to be sort of mindful of that so that makes it a little bit more more tricky um, we we're actually three captains on the boat um, Sid the owner has uh, He's been a captain um, on commercial boats and has had his own sailboat for, for many years. Um, but he's never done sailed one of these cats. He's always been a mono guy. So that's one of the reasons why we've got uh, myself and Wayne on board. Wayne's uh, a very experienced um, delivery skipper and also um, has the crazy distinction of being the only person ever to, sit, to uh, row across the Atlantic from Cape, uh, from Cape Town to, to Rio de Janeiro. Um, totally unassisted in a small little rowboat with a friend of his um, I'll hopefully do a little interview with him and he can explain a little bit about it yeah I don't want to spill the beans on his story so we'll we'll get that from him um, Ian our other crew member is uh, works at Nexus Ian's been with Nexus since uh, since the beginning of Nexus since uh, hull number one he actually does all the fitment and installation of, of all the furniture and all the fittings and uh, and all the cabinetry the cabinetry is made by Chippy Andrew who's uh, works at Nexus and and uh, between him and, and Ian and uh, and the other guys they do all the fitment and they do all the all the fitting of the windows um, pretty much just about anything that needs to be fitted on the boat um, so he's been there for ages a really good craftsman and he's now wanting to do his ticket and joining us to uh, to get his miles so that he can he can do his ticket in time he's actually busy building a small little yacht um, he's got a little trimaran that he's busy fitting out he wants to go sailing one day as well I guess it's all of our dreams so yeah um, pretty diverse crew we've got three skippers on the on the boat which is challenging uh, in any situation because we're all used to skippering boats so it's uh, we have to be mindful of each other and and you know keep it cool um, but at the moment all going great we've had a really good sail this first three days we're into our fourth day now and we've been averaging over seven knots uh, in very light winds I think tonight and uh, tomorrow and the next day we're going to set a few records because it's going to go past 22 25 depending on the wind direction and whether we can use the main so yeah that's pretty much our setup in a nutshell I hope this is coming out on the uh, mic in the wind yeah so happy boat uh, we had some great ceviche and uh, sashimi for lunch and I'm gonna be busy making a pasta this evening so yeah that's it that's as far as we are we're probably about a third of the way to uh, St. Helena and looking forward to some awesome sailing and a few more fish Yeah, there's a lot of ways you can set these boats up um, and uh, the only way you find out what works the best is uh, is by just working through different systems you want to set it up in different ways and then finding what works the best um, it's not always that you'll do this gull winging stuff so working out uh, how to to arrange your sheet line so that you can fill these sails we don't have an electric furler on this boat so you've got all your furling is done manually so you always got to take that into account 
Um, so yeah, it takes a little bit of working out and, uh, and finding what's the best way and the easiest way, the simplest way to get it done. Now this is our in-boom furling system. It's pretty interesting. You can see how it furls on the mechanism on the front. She's pretty tight in her, in her enclosure, so you've got, to, you've got to be very careful when you're dropping her to keep everything straight, keep the battens horizontal and make sure that the cell comes down evenly otherwise you can get sort of an overrun in it or it gets uh, it bunches up so yeah it's uh we still getting used to it so yeah it's, we do it slowly to make sure that it that it goes in, in as most uh, you know as efficiently as possible you can see the sail fold up now oh, these boats are absolutely magic man this this boat is so quick it's definitely quicker than lyra uh, she's lighter, she's got more high-tech sails, uh, dagger boards, so you've got less drag in the water. Um, she was absolutely flying when we came down to Cape Point in that uh, 40 knots, 50 knots of wind. I mean, we were just on a little piece of cloth, just a jib. Um, but definitely she accelerates faster, she's a lighter boat. And uh, yeah, looking forward to getting into some perfect conditions and, and sailing her with a full main and, and jib you know, in, uh, in beating conditions with, with a good ocean. I think she's going to do some serious speed. She's, she's really quick. Yeah, so we've had a big increase in speed and we've still got the code out, gull winging. We're starting to do eight to 10 knots and we've got 20 knots on the, from the rear. We have to drop this uh, code zero quickly. You got it already? Is he getting it done? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Whoa, I tell you what, watch out for a pocket here. Yeah. Yeah, the that's freaking it's actually been bloody well. Yeah, that's actually brilliant. That's actually brilliant. Oh, oh, oh. Let's go, let's go, let's go, yeah, let's go, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. It's looking better now. Shit, it started to make a pocket. You see there? See that flap on the top there? We're gonna take it down anyway. Okay, cool. See how, see how it starts to unravel like that? Then you've got a swivel at the top and then it freaking unwinds up that way. It was bunching at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, after our trials and tribulations uh, on Lara Noah, Kerry and I had some horrific experiences with the uh, code coming unraveled into the wind. So yeah, I was just passing on some info on how that happens and why it happens under stress when you're trying to fill it up. Sunset. Yeah, when you're unsure of the wind speed for the night, it's always better to go into smaller sails and to give yourself a bigger margin of error in case the wind comes up. Yeah, yeah Ian, that, that, that must come down a bit more, eh? Yeah, just come here. Okay, let's check. Okay. okay. Ready on that? Hey, get the sheep ready. Run the sheep on ya. Yeah. Okay. You want to carry it over somewhere or no? I can sort it out once she's up. Yeah, she'll have to come out on it. You won't get it out, Ian, because it's on a swivel. You've got to pull it up, eh? Just get it, get it up. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Not like a barefoot on that stuff. Eh? Okay, go, 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 go. Oh, she's badly twisted, eh? Shit. Very badly twisted, eh? Okay, there she's untwisting. Okay, go. Wind's blowing. It's not such an easy task. What's what's simple in the in nice conditions? Okay, go, sir. Which is exactly why you don't want to be doing uh, sail changes in the middle of the night in poor okay, conditions. Go, go. Okay, now we just got to, it's just got that halyard's a bit soft, eh? Yeah, always better to set up a conservative sail set for the night and avoid the uh, surprises. Watch it, watch it Ian, watch it Ian, watch it there, watch it there. Watch it Ian, watch it Ian. Uh, morning of the fourth day, I think. Fourth or fifth. Sure, I'm looking a bit blurry. Didn't sleep much last night. Uh, very bumpy, very noisy. Uh, up to 30 knots of wind. And uh, we had to drop sails. We're only on the jib again. Got a bit of a sea running. Bit of a miserable sea. But uh, now we're flying along. Sits on shift. All going well. Can hear the noise. Uh, a little bit later in the morning. Wind's blowing a bit. A really bumpy, choppy, very mixed up sea. But uh, yeah, we've down to simplified completely. Got just the jib up between sort of seven and eleven knots on the runs pretty much the same as the conditions which we came down in when we uh, same conditions we came down from St. Francis basically south southeast uh, it's probably this is more southwest now and straight up the uh, rear but she's nice man fast and and very comfortable a little snubber or a bar barber hauler just to pull the, the sail a bit wider to give it a bit more purchase and everything tidied up really simple really simple and very easy way to sail downwind when it's strong like this and you can handle up to probably up to 40 in this you know 30 35 maybe go into the stay sail when it goes over 35 but, uh, yeah, I know she flies like this, absolutely flies. We were doing these big freaking roller coaster bobsleigh rides last night, bumping, making a noise. It was beautiful. Standard breakfast bun with a microwave egg and, and bacon. Staple diet for the morning. Tonight's gonna be a fat chicken, Moroccan style, plus the veggies, which are starting to get. A little bit long in the tooth, we need to use them up and get them going. Now we're doing up to 10 knots now on the runs. It's a little bit wobbly out here. Getting a bit of water on the deck here. Flying along. A little bit of swell building. We'd actually raised the marlin on the teaser the previous day, but uh, with no hooks didn't hook up. Not going to stop the boat for anything at this speed, that's for sure. A good 25 to 30 blowing now. Perfect sailing conditions. You can see behind me, the sea is quite on. Got a got solid 25 knots. Sea is pretty messed up, very jobbly. We're surfing at up to 15 knots every now and then. Um, but yeah, we've been doing super well. Just made supper. You boys have enjoyed some Moroccan chicken. And yeah, that's what it looks like. Just a jib up. Yeah. Should have another two days of this, a day and a half, and then it starts to ease off, and then we may just end up on the on the spinnaker. So. Yeah, hopefully some of you guys have been following us. You can see on the uh, 
predict wind up that we're in good wind but soon uh, we'll be getting lighter so join us next week as Sid gets some air in his lungs and starts playing the harp for us we uh, head uh, closer to Centelliana and uh, the weather starts to change so make sure you subscribe and join us as we arrive at Centelliana in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean thanks a ton for watching ciao for now